We're ready to plot planes. So what is a plane? Well, I don't mean the machine that you use to fly from Chicago to LA. I'm talking about a geometric object that is a flat surface. Well, we might recognize that in nature, almost nothing is a perfectly flat surface. But for structural geology, it's a close enough approximation. We can represent faults, fractures, foliation, and bedding surfaces as planes, and a stern is a useful tool to visualize the geometry of these features. The two metrics that I'll use to describe the attitude or orientation of a plane are strike and dip. Strike is defined as a horizontal line that lies within a plane, and we record that as a direction. Dip is the angle that the plane tilts from horizontal. So, I know that strike is a horizontal line, so that means that on my stereonet, strike is going to plot somewhere on the primitive circle. And since I recorded it as a direction, and since I know that north is 0, east is 90, south is 180, and west is 270, if I give a direction between 0 and 360, I know where to plot strike. Because dip is a tilt from horizontal, I know it's going to plot somewhere in the middle of the stereonet. So it's going to plot near the perimeter of the stereonet if dip is close to zero, and close to the center of the stereonet if dip is close to 90 degrees. There are a few different conventions to writing down strike and dip. I'm going to use right hand rule convention, which I'll explain here in a moment. The first convention to take note of is the quadrant notation. north or south, toward the east or toward the west. So for example, north 30 west will plot 30 degrees west of north. About right there. Azimuth notation would record this not as north 30 west, but as a number between 0 and 360. Since north is 360 and we're doing 30 degrees west of north, 360 minus 30, then, would be 330. How we record dip is just writing down the angle of dip between 0 and 90, and be sure that I record the dip direction. I'm going to write down to the northeast here. Now, if I'm using right-hand rule, I'm going to use azimuth notation. But I'm not going to go ahead and record the dip direction because the strike tells me what the dip direction is. Since I tell you that the strike direction is 330, I know that it's dipping to the right hand side of 330 or to the northeast quadrant. I could also have recorded the strike for quadrant and azimuth notation as south 30 east. For azimuth, that would be 150. So for the quadrant and azimuth notations, this is perfectly acceptable. But for the right hand rule, if I wrote down 150 as the strike direction, that tells me that the plane dips to the southwest, which it's not. It's dipping to the northeast. So 150 is not correct for right-hand rule. Right-hand rule is a convenient and concise way to just deal with numbers and infer dip direction based entirely on the strike direction.